If you've got a bunch of raw data in Google Sheets, then some if and some ifs are the functions to go to. Let's jump right in. So we've got here three categories, A, B, and C, and they have been categorized as either I or E, income or expenses, and then an amount. So let's say we want to know the total amount for category A. Let's put in here a title for category, and we'll use, let's say, A for example. The total amount in column F. In F4 here, we're going to use the sum if formula. Now sum if gives us the sum of the numbers, so it's first asking what range are we going to look through. Now in this case, we're going to look through the category range, which is over here. We'll put a comma, and then it's asking what is the criteria? What are we looking for? Well, in this case, we're looking for the category A, which we've selected here. Put a comma, and then what is the sum range? That's going to be column C. Press enter, and we get 120, because if we look over here, the category A has a total of $120 in column C. Now let's say that we want to change the category to B. That's not going to be very exciting because we only have one from category B and that's saying 60. If we add extra information, so let's say that B was an expense in this case and it was $100, then unfortunately our data doesn't actually update just yet because we need to change the function taking into account the expanding columns. So if we press enter to get the function back up, we can see sum if A3 to A6. Now that's just highlighting the orange section. So what we should do is take this A6 and just backspace on that 6. That expands the orange section all the way to the bottom of the spreadsheet. We'll do the same for C6 right at the end. We'll press backspace, expanding that column all the way down to the bottom. Press enter, and now we get 160 because we have a total of 60 from category B here and 60 and 100, sorry, from category B here. Now, changing this category each time we want to update and see the total amount is a little bit of a pain. So let's jump into E4 here and type equals unique and then select all of category A. We'll press enter and that gives us all of the information in category A. Over in F here, we'll enter the cell by pressing enter. Where we have A3 to A, let's click on that and then press F4 and you'll see that some dollar signs pop up. These dollar signs mean that we are fixing that range. So this range will always be that range. In C3 to C, again, we will lock that range, keeping this blue section as it is as we copy this section down. We can see this handle in the bottom. If we mouse over that, it changes to a plus and we can click on that and drag it down. There is another way, but let's take a look at a more in-depth example. We can see a list of account managers, the number of sales, and the total amount that they receive. Now, up in the top, I've got a drop down, but that's just to help us out later on when we get to identifying the correct areas. Over here, we have a summary table. Now, this summary table is going to give us the total number of sales for each account manager and the total amount that each account manager brought in. So again, let's start with equals sum if the range we're looking for is the account manager range. So that's all this section. I'm just going to select the first few and then press backspace. That's going to select the entire column. Press com comma and then what is the criterion? We want Simon Hull because we're going to look for his name within that range. Press comma and what is the sum range? What do we want to add? going to be the number of sales. Again, I'm just going to select the first few, press backspace, and that's going to give us the whole column. Press enter, and it tells us that Simon had 38 sales for this uh, period. Now, just like before, we want to copy this across and down. So let's press enter on that. And we can see here A2 to A is selected, but it's not locked in place. So let's again press F4 on your keyboard, and that locks that in place. And same with B2 to B, let's press F4 to lock that in place, in place. Press enter and we get 38 for Simon Hull. We can now take this handle and drag it down and that gives us all of the account managers number of sales. Now we want to copy the same formula over to the total amount, but if we try that, we're gonna have a few issues. So first off, if we, if we just copy that across, we see there's a zero here. Now two things are going on here. First, if we enter the cell, we can see that E5 has now changed to F5. So it's now looking for the number 38 within the account manager column, but that doesn't make any sense. There's no account managers called 38. What's happening is as we copied the formula across, this part of the formula also came across as well. So instead of referencing Simon, it's referencing this 38. So what we can do back in the original function is press enter to enter the cell. And then where we see E5, we can press F4 three times. So that locks E in place. So as we copy the function across, column E won't be copied across. Press enter, 
copy that over to here and we get the number 38. Now 38 isn't the total amount, 38 is the number of sales. So that's the other thing going on here. We need to change the sum range. So here we still have B2 to B selected, which is the number of sales. We want to move that across to the amount. So an easy way to do that is just enter the cell and then change these Bs into Cs and press enter. And we can see 13,570 because that's all that Simon has made for this period. We can copy this down to all of the different account managers and see their total numbers. Let's just hit this formatting button at the top, format as currency and get rid of the extra decimal places, giving us the total amount for each account manager. So let's just double check that everything is okay. We want to find each of these people. So we've already seen Simon Hull. Simon is right here, but let's just see if he exists anywhere else. So we'll select Simon Hull from the drop down list. We can see that Simon Hull has made 13,570, uh, which is the same as what we have here. And there's no other instances of Simon in this list. Let's change this to Preston and we can see Preston made these three. I'm going to select these three holding control and clicking and down in the bottom right corner we can see 26,430 and that's the same number we see here in the total amount for Preston. So that's how some if works but what if we want to make this a little bit more automated? Well let's uh, just reset this page here and let's try that again but this time we're going to automate things just a little bit. So we'll go back up to the number of sales and we'll use the same formula we used last time. So the range is going to be the account managers, press backspace to give us a full column, a comma that gives us the criterion, and then in this case we're going to select all of the account managers. Press a comma, and then the sum range will be these number of sales. Selecting just the first few and then backspacing to give us the full column. Now if we try that, it's just going to give us the number 38. It's not going to auto fill in all of these account managers. What we can do is, I'm just going to leave a bit of space at the beginning, We'll start off with an if statement. If E5 to E equals nothing, then we'll return nothing. Otherwise, we'll do the sum if. Hold Control, Shift, and Enter, and press Enter. That gives us the number of sales for all of the account managers. Now, we'll just head back into that cell and lock the things we need to lock. So in this case, we want locks around E5 to E. We want to keep that column but we want the rows to change. So I'm just going to press F4 three times. One, two, three, locking E in place. Over here in the sum ifs, A2 will keep that in place, so lock that just once. And then E5 to E10, again, we'll lock that on the E, but not on the number. We can actually get rid of this 10 here because we don't need it. And then for the B2 to B, we can leave that exactly as it is because we want the formula to move over to column C when we copy and paste this over to the next column here. So if we copy this over, we instantly get the total amount of sales for each of the account managers. Let's just copy and paste the formatting using Control, Alt, and V, and we're done. Just like last time, we can double check if we wanted to. Simon, there he is. Uh, let's go Natalia. Uh, she has 42 and 14,240. And Terry has 76, which we can see down the bottom and 24,260. Again, we can see that down the bottom. So that's how we can use some if in Google Sheets to automate some of our work. Now, what happens if we have two criteria? So not just an account manager, but we also have a second criteria. Well, we'll take a look at that with some ifs. But before we do, if this has been helpful to you, please make sure you give this video a like and feel free to leave a comment down below. Let's jump into some ifs. So now we have a new table that uh, has not only account managers, but also countries to look for. Over in the right, we've got a summary table. And up the top, we have the dropdown we had before, but we've also got another dropdown for country. So I'm going to click on Australia, for example. You could have selected any one of those. And then we'll start off our formula with some ifs, because we're going to be looking for multiple criteria. The sum range in this case, well, this is under number of sales, so our sum name range is going to be number of sales. I'll select those first few, press backspace to give us that full column, and I'm going to press the F4 key twice. Now this locks the rows, but not the columns, because we'll be copying this over to the total amount in the next step. We'll press comma, and it's asking for a criteria range. We'll start off with the account manager's name, so we'll select the, these. Just the first few, press backspace to give us that full column, and I'm going to lock that in place with F2. Press a comma, and what is the criteria we want? In this case, for account managers, we'll select Simon's name. We'll press a comma because we want another criteria. 
In this case, the range we'll select is the countries. Just select the first few, backspace and F4 to lock it in place. We'll put a comma and the country in this case is going to be in G2 up here. I'm going to keep G2 locked because as we copy and paste this formula around, we want G2 to always reference G2. I'm actually going to go back to F5 here and also lock that, but only column F, just locking the column and not the row. Press enter and we get 38 and we can copy this all the way down. We can see some zeros here telling us that Natalia and Terry had no sales in Australia. If we change this to New Zealand, Terry has eight sales in New Zealand, Canada, we get more. So now we can see the number of sales based on which country those sales were made. For the total amount, we'll do pretty much the same thing. So we'll copy and paste that over, giving us zero dollars for Simon in Canada. That makes sense because he made no sales. If we drag this down, we can see those sales automatically update and we'll finish off by formatting everything nice and neat with a broader. So as we change the country, we can see the updates to both the number of sales and the total amount. But what if you wanted to compare different account manager and country combinations instead of an overall country for every account manager? Well, let's take a look at that. So this time we've got pretty much the exact same setup. We have the same table and we have a summary table, but in this case we have different countries selected for each account manager. So it's going to be very similar. We'll start off with equals sum ifs. The sum range will be the number of sales because we're in the number of sales section. Press a comma. The criteria range will be the account manager. I'm going to lock that in place. And the, um, the criterion will be the account manager. I'm going to lock that on column F. Then we put a comma. The second criteria will be the cr country. Lock that in place and select the country just like before and locking column G. I'm also going to put a lock on the two in column C in the sum range and press enter. Simon in Australia gets 38 sales. We can copy this formula across and down. And now as we change the information within the uh, country code, let's say Morgan is now in Canada, we can see that she had 25 sales and $7,900. If we change Terry, for example, to New Zealand, I think that should give us eight and 2,500. So there is how we can use some if and some ifs. Now earlier in some if we saw how we could use an array formula to automate this a little bit. So how do we get an array formula working for some ifs? The problem is that it's already using an array, so we can't get an array formula out of it. So instead to create an array formula for some ifs, we're actually going to use some if. Now in this case, the range is going to be a concatenation of two columns. It's going to be the account manager ampersand Australia or the country. So we're connecting those two together using this ampersand. And if we highlight this, Simon Hull Australia, that is the concatenation. Press a comma. What is the criterion? In this case, it's going to be Simon Hull, the account manager, and ampersand to connect them with Australia. Press a comma. And then the sum range will be column C here. If we press this, we get 41, which is incorrect because we already know it should be 38 from our work earlier. But if we press control shift and enter, we do get the number 38. So now let's see if we can expand this. I'm just going to push this onto the next line and we'll start with if F5 to F is blank, then leave a blank. Otherwise we're going to do this sum if, and we'll use sum if F5 to F and G5 to G press enter and we get the sum of sales or the number of sales. Let's go back into the formula and lock the correct ranges. So here we'll put a dollar sign on F. Here we'll lock all of A2 to A and B2 to B. And then within the uh, criterion, we'll again lock just the Fs and the Gs, but not the rows. Press enter, copy this across to the total amount. And we can see we have the total amount as an array formula for each of our account managers and the country. So that's how some if and some ifs works using some little hacks to get some ifs working as an array formula, which is super helpful, especially if we need to add extra account managers or if we want to expand that summary list to include both every account manager and every country. 
So I hope this has been helpful. And if it has, please leave a comment and a like, and I'll see you in the next video.